Thanks for stopping by again on such short notice. Um, back for another, I think gonna be a short, but especially self-indulgent douche -isode. Um I got a fistful of albums here and um, you know, they've been sitting and spinning recently. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna show those, you know, it's the usual, probably say a couple things about them and then have a beer and you know move on with our lives. We're starting with something from the 1980s, uh, you know, like a mid 80s thing. This is kind of a short-lived mid 1980s Swiss all-girl group called Chin Chin. And this is a compilation called Cry in Vain. This is on on sealed records. I think this came out earlier this year. I could be I could be dead wrong on that. Songs ranging I think I think from like 83 or 84 to 88. It's kind of um, kind of uh, like punk. I'm gonna call it punk but like has some glam pop new wave C86 even things going on. They did release one full-length LP in 1985 called Sound of the West Way. That is a tough record to get your hands on. I think it was reissued at least once. I think most recently maybe 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And even that is not particularly easy to get your hands on. This is a 14 track compilation. It does, it's notable in that it includes the Janice Long session, which is a radio session that is only available on here. It's not available in any other, in any other form. Those songs are really excellent. The whole thing is really excellent. Kind of up, up tempo, lo-fi. Ramones meets the shop assistants, <laughs> meets the Beach Boys, meets the bangle, Bangles, and I, I can go on and on. I believe they they toured with shop assistants, and and I think they had the same. We're under the same management. You can see here they tour with uh, television personalities. Anyway, I find this really, really infectious and just thoroughly enjoyable 80s music. This one's on some, some, fairly, some fairly stunning, delicious black vinyl. It's the label there. I do feel like we, um, we, I feel like they missed an opportunity, whomever, I feel like an opportunity was missed because I think that the entire output of this band could fit in a, on a double LP. Um, I do think there's some complicated licensing issues involved. I know from what I can tell, this is not available. This, this specific compilation, including the jazz long sessions, um, I don't think that you can stream this. And I don't even think that the download, like, I don't think you can buy the download of this. Um, I think you can piece it together. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure if you're willing to go through the proper, through the proper channels, you can, uh, you can get your hands on it. But yeah, there's definitely some, some rights or licensing issues that are preventing them from releasing the, the whole kit and caboodle, which I think they could or should have done. Anyway, Chin Chin, cry in vain.
I continue to be having audio issues with some of my videos and you know I'm gonna try and update my workflow to to try and catch it before I post it because basically what's happening is some people can't hear me talking which makes um which makes it pretty frustrating for them to watch it if they can't hear me and additionally there's no um no captions no subtitles some people watch um, translated subtitles those don't work um, this is specifically on the videos that people are having audio issues on just just so you know like it's probably more frustrating for me than it is for the handful of people that that this is impacting <laughs> But I'm trying to, to rectify that. All right, next, this is a, um, a duo from California, formerly of the band uh, Abe Vigoda. This is the debut LP as Cupid and Psych is the name, the name of the artist. Uh, and the album is called Romantic, Romantic Music on Felt. Um, their name is taken from the Scritti Politti album, Cupid and Psych 85, is that what it's called? Something like that. Um, this is electronic dream pop with a lot of, I'd say like 1980s new wave and post-punk influences. I've seen multiple people referencing The Cure, which I don't really hear, but maybe a little bit in spots, it's, I guess it's a little bit of a lot of things in spots. I feel like I maybe hear more Love and Rockets. Just a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot again, but a little bit of Love and Rockets. And, you know, very dancey, almost electronics at times. And a lot of samples as well. Here's the inner sleeve. Yeah. A lot of samples, dancey, almost like drum and bassy at times for in spots there's the there's the words it's definitely not going to be up up everyone's street so to speak but it's kind of growing on me i'll show you the show you the fancy pants uh color on this one and the labels anyway maybe Maybe you liked Abe Vigoda and you're, you're curious. Maybe you like, uh, you like yourself some electronic dream pop. We're checking out Cupid and Psych, romantic music. If you were thinking to yourself, this douche looks like he could use a beer, you'd be right. And um, I'm gonna show you what I'm having. If you're feeling especially frisky, you can also have one of these. Um, it's called Axeman IP. I think, we've, I think we've, we've had this, we've sat here and had this together before from Surly Brewing Company, Axeman IPA. It's 7.2%. Um, it's the kind of beer that'll put hair on your butt. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, head over and uh, grab yourself a can. Yeah, it says dank, hoppy, and loud. Cheers. All right, this is um, an artist out of Chico, California. Go by the, the name The Wind Ups. And this is their second LP, the second LP called Happy like this on Mount Saint Mount Saint Mountain Records. This is really just um, kind of a as far as the the studio albums go, it's really a one man show. Jake Sprecher, um, he basically writes, records, performs the entire album. I am under the impression that there is also like a very good. Um, touring band that he has to tour this material also. 
Anyway, this is very low, very lo-fi, I would say, power pop or punk. Kind of depends on, on, on your, what angle you're coming at it from. I think some people, I think you could say punk. Um, some pop, some pop elements. It's kind of frenzied, rough around the edges, fiery rock and roll, you could say. Um, so it's punk, but with a lot of hooks. There's very fuzzy bass throughout the whole thing, kind of laying the foundation on the tracks. And you can definitely, you can definitely hear like the backyard, what I'm gonna call the backyard. I might have actually seen this. It has a backyard recording quality, like a very, home, very homemade lo-fi sound that I think possibly could turn, well, definitely, it could turn some folks off that you aren't down with that kind of, um, you know, lo-fi. It feels like it was recorded in a bedroom to tape. Gee, this is another one. This is another fancy pants, and also very similar, very similar um, fancy pants on this one. Um, Should the labels, because they're kind of cool. It's 11 tracks, 21 minutes. Does not wear out its welcome. I feel like if this album were twice the length, if it was a 40 minute album, I think it would start to, I think it would start to lose me a little bit, but at 21 minutes, <laughs> at 11 tracks at 21 minutes, it gets in, it gets out, and um, yeah, I, I was enjoying it. The wind-ups, happy, happy like this. Okay, this is one I picked up in a, in a clearance bin towards the beginning of, of this year. Uh, it was really like next to nothing. It was, I think it was like five-ish dollars. I took a flyer on it based on vaguely being familiar, having heard of, of the group, and also being familiar with the label. This is um, a guy named Russell Edling, formerly of a, I guess formerly of a Philly band called Cherry and now currently recording and on this recording, recording under the name Golden Apples. This album is called Shadowland. This is a, another, yet another lo-fi recording. It's um, this kind of more garagey indie rock, with some like 90s like slacker vibes has some fuzzy power pop moments with like witty vocals, kind of, kind of rooted in how this was recorded. It was recorded in isolation in, in 2020. And so a lot of the, a lot of the lyrics are, you know, coming from that place. You can also see, I think that the, the purpose of the, of the sleeve design, it's kind of, you know, it's like a, a, sm a tiny floor plan, like you're, it's, it's meant to, I think it's meant to be like claustrophobic. It's the, put it in her sleeve that has words and stuff on it. Um, a couple spots remind me of say, just a little bit of like early back, like, like stereopathetic soul manure era back. But I feel like that maybe is, has as much to do with like the way that it was recorded has that same, actually I think that stereopathetic soul manure is even more, more lo-fi than this, but nonetheless, um, 
after this project was was released, it, it became more of a more of a band over time. Yeah, on here it's really just primary primarily the one guy there. I do see a variety of of guest musicians on here as well. I don't know if they recorded it together or, or like when they were when the guests were on here or if they did it remotely. At any rate, Golden Apples Shadowland. Anyway, so I guess I liked that uh, that Golden Apples record enough that, which is their debut, the debut under the name Golden Apples, and now this is their third LP, which just came out maybe a week or two ago, called Banana Sugar Fire. This is also on on Lamo Records. This has more of an established full band lineup featuring a number of, of like veterans of the Philadelphia Philadelphia area music scene. This is, uh, here's the inner sleeve. This one is densely, densely layered, crunchy, fuzzed out, slightly psychedelic, um, you know, lo-fi guitar rock. These both were on, on delicious Delicious black vinyl. I guess I'll show a label as long as I'm here. Anyway, so some fuzzy power pop, a little jangly, a lot of like pop harmonies, still a little more on the lo-fi side. There's plenty of 80s like college rock and 90s alternative rock like influences that you can hear throughout. The vocals are a little bit twee, I think, probably for some. But I have enjoyed this the first couple times I spun it, or you know, the first couple times that I that I sat and spun it. Um, it's worked out for me. So anyway, golden apples, banana, sugar, fire. Yeah. 